Lynn Kenny, artist from County Clare, you're so welcome. Thank you for joining me for Craft and Story. You started out, uh, you were born in inner city Dublin and you're now in County Clare. Can you tell me how that happened? That's a huge leap in terms of location. Yeah, well, um, I went to college in inner city Dublin and lived in the suburbs, but I suppose my parents moved from the Midlands when they were young to get work in Dublin. So I would have visited the Midlands every weekend and always loved the idea of living, you know, more rural. But I did my years in Dublin. Um, my party years and my college years and thought okay I want to settle down and my husband and myself moved to the west um, so that's how I came down here and I would never go back I just love the pace of life here and being in nature and the sense of community and yeah the lake the beauty around us it's just stunning. So how did your relationship with craft begin? Well I always remember my grandmother would be hand sewing she always said that, but it was mostly, I think, from my mother. She was, she taught fashion and garment construction and garment, you know, pattern drafting. And there was always fabric and threads and the like at home. I, I, I loved drawing as a kid, but I also loved patchwork. So collecting bits of, you know, redundant fabric and sewing it into longer strips of fabric. And it all told a story. And when I look back now, it really does make sense because I still do that. And I still use old bits of fabric, but reinvented into something new with stitch but in a very I suppose skilled way now over you know four years in college and then 25 years of experience that it has become more and more skilled and more um, refined you know but for years I would be hand sewing and then my mother brought me my first turquoise singer machine it was like a beast of a thing you know when I was 15 that was when my entrepreneurship started I took a stand or a a stall at the Black Rock Market. Brought my Patrick there at the age of 15, 16. My parents drove me down there. Now, I didn't sell anything, <laughs> but um, it started me off learning about that, you know. You mentioned how your your art, it's, it's an art form. Sewing is an art form. It's like 20,000 years old where they, they first started sewing using animal bones, which is amazing when you think of that and the turquoise yeah. finger. I can, I can mm. imagine it. But you, you mentioned how you tell a story through your... Um, tree or sewing and that's really interesting yeah no I I use sewing to draw I just love that idea that you know wh why not use stitch or thread to draw rather than a, picking up a pencil it's like a mark making tool you know um so I suppose a, a, a strand of what I do is commissioned work um where people tell me their stories it might be stages in their life or you know happy occasions like weddings engagement new babies um you know, significant birthdays, 60, 70, but then there's some um, retirement. And also I've, I've, I've created pieces for quite profound, sad times in our lives where, you know, we want to signify those and not forget them. You mentioned about the commission, the, the work that you do in terms of getting commissions, like you're in Beaumont Hospital in terms of like public space, some of your, your artwork, like because this is about how you craft your story and how you tell it to your audience, like how did that come about? Yeah, well, I, I suppose my work kind of fitted in with that um, environment and that it's quite playful and it's cheerful and you know going through um, an environment like that in a hospital where you're you know you're worried you're sick um, and I suppose the art um, curator approached me and said look I think your work would really fit in here can you do some commissioned work for here that will really lift people um, so we did some yeah, very uplifting, playful pieces with the birds. And I also did some pieces for the Lady of Lords Hospital as well. Recently, um, it still has to be home. COVID kind of put it by the wayside, but it was for the children's A&E um, department. So all the birds were flying over, um, I suppose, landmarks in Drogheda and Mead. Um, and the birds all had broken wings or broken leg or they had the teddy bear and you know so they were but they were on zeppelins and they were on you know funny planes and you know so there's a real fun element to it. It's amazing how your art is kind of it's um, transformative in terms of like bringing joy and therapy and you know uh, these, you're playing on all these emotions and you're bringing your art to to those different dimensions and to those different platforms. I wanted to ask you as well how, like in terms of telling your story to a global audience, how and has social media, does it, does it assist you, does it hinder you, or what has that impact been in terms of you telling your story to your, your audience? I mean, it's hugely beneficial in that you're connecting to people and you're getting that feedback, you know. Um, it can also be hindering in that 
time wise is you know when you're self employed it can be very distracting as well and you know you want to keep that momentum going with people you know um and to show them you appreciate your, their support as well. I, I do get a lot of um, communication through it, you know, from people inquiring about things. So it is huge, um, but also a very big time sink. So I do have someone who helps me with that now, you know, um, but I, I would do the more, more per personal, um, you know, parts of the business, but he, he would help just get, get more images out there, you know, so. So yeah, it's a bit, it's a, it's a bit of both really, because it is, it's a whole new learning, you know, you think in, after 25 years of, you know, working in an area, you know, you go to college, you learn your skill, you learn, you find your, your image, you find your brand, and then you have to learn all the business elements to it. And then social media comes along and then you have to learn that. And that's always changing. So it's, it is a minefield. The thing is like, it's proven that when they take scans of artists' brains, the structure is different, like the creative part of your brain. So the structure of our, your brain, for example, is different. So like even you having to be a craft maker and then having to put your business hat on literally and put it out on social media, I suppose, um, that, that in itself is difficult. And then just on that, like, how do you, I suppose, hone your skills? Like, do you upscale? Do you like, or, or how, how do you look at, like, do you look at different methods of what you're doing and how you can do it in a different way? Because you have transitioned, like in terms of what you began and now, what, you know, in terms of your collection, can you tell us a little bit about that and why that transition? You do have to keep, moving forward and also for yourself you do get bored with what you've produced and then and I suppose that's the creative process you know you do need to keep moving on keep producing new things and also those um the range of the chinaware products that I produced I was thinking I would love them in my kitchen I love drinking from a thin china cup I love a cup of tea from that and I thought gee I love the idea of something textural you know going on to something shiny and, and stitching, going on to something hard and shiny like China. I just love that um, juxtaposition of stitch lettering on, on China. So that's what really drove me to that. And, and in order to do that, I had to learn how to fire these Chinaware products. So I didn't want to go and get them mass produced. So there's processes to each product. So it's all, yeah, they're all learning. But if you're like with me, I'm very determined when I get an idea, right, I want to do it. Um, so, I'll, you know, that'll drive me through it. And then I'll have the learning done. When you produce something, you go, oh, I love it. And then you know, maybe after two days, mm, actually, I don't love it as much. And then you have to make something else to get that kind of feeling that someone gets when they see it first. You know, they go, oh, I love that, Lynn. And it's, you, that's what drives you on to keep producing more and more because you want to get that hit <laughs> from making a new piece, you know? And like, mm. what, what is next, I suppose, in terms of like, I know that you're, you're, you've workshopped, but what's next for you in terms of... What, you know craft making or is there anything on the horizon well I suppose I have Bloom coming up now next week in in the Phoenix Park so that's um and I love this time of year with you know everything coming to life in the garden and the nature you know flowers coming out and the busyness of it so a lot of it is nature based it's a lot of wildflower drawings uh, with stitch and paint so I'm bringing a lot of nature-based work, a lot of new work. So that's very exciting to actually, it's always good to have a goal to work towards because sometimes you can meander and not know what you're working for. And that just really pushed me on to produce new work and I'm really enjoying it. Um, and it's led me down a new path, you know. The, other, I've, I, the thing is, I have too many ideas. I find I have too many ideas and then I do little bits of everything and there's no correlation sometimes I need to, but um, that's something I need to work on is, okay, need to work on this first and get a good body of that done and then move on to the next. Listen, thank you so much for your time and it's exciting you. to know what is next and Bloom and, and everything else. We wish you the very best of luck and thank you for today.